Advanced Drainage Systems is the world's largest stormwater solutions provider. StormTip, a division of ADS, is a leading supplier of chambers for stormwater management. Make the most advanced name in drainage part of your project. If your project requires the SC310 or SC740 chambers, please refer to a separate installation manual. This video is intended as guidance for the MC3500 and 4500. A properly installed StormTech chamber system will help you and your clients save valuable land and protect water resources. You can accomplish this by effectively utilizing informed personnel and the available StormTech instruction tools. Before we get started, let's define two important terms that we will use. The foundation stone is the crushed angular stone under the chambers. The embedment stone is the crushed angular stone between the chambers to a depth of at least 12 inches over the top of the chambers. The first step is to set up a pre-con meeting to discuss the required steps, establish a timeline, and determine an appropriate method for placement of embedment stone. Here are three commonly applied methods. With method one, a stone shooter located outside of the excavation evenly places embedment stone over the entire bed in a continuous manner. Method two, the most commonly used method, is to lay one or more chambers at a time across the bed. With the backhoe situated on the foundation stone or bottom of the excavation, align the bucket so that it is parallel to the chamber rows, and place the embedment stone onto the crown of the chambers so that the stone falls evenly on both sides of the chamber. It is important not to allow the embedment stone to encroach on the joint to be overlapped, as this will prevent the joint from seating properly. With method three, the embedment stone is placed by equipment positioned outside of the excavation, usually a long boom hoe. The bed can be backfilled either after the entire chamber system has been assembled or as the chamber rows are being assembled. When placing stone by reaching across the rows, the operator must be careful to place stone on the crown to ensure even distribution on both sides of the chamber. In accordance with these three backfilling methods, never is it acceptable to place equipment on the bed. The dump and push method is the placement of embedment stone around and above chambers by pushing stone with construction equipment, such as with dozers or loaders, prior to the stone being placed between chamber rows, perimeters, and over the top of the chambers. Dump and push is not an acceptable method to place embedment stone, and any damage to chambers resulting from the use of this method will not be covered by the standard ADS product warranty. Two significant pitfalls associated with dump and push are first, that it's very difficult to ensure even filling of embedment stone on either side of the dozer blade, causing chambers on either side of the dozer to distort. And secondly, that the tendency of the operator is to push perpendicular or diagonally across the rows as the backfilling proceeds along the bed, rather than always pushing parallel from the starting edge of the bed all the way to the leading edge of the fill. Pushing perpendicular to the chamber rows with insufficient cover will cause distortion of chambers. Therefore, the dump and push method is not an acceptable method to backfill chambers. Once the appropriate installation method has been chosen, confirm the ship date of the materials as well as the projected start date. Inventory the appropriate number of chambers, solid end caps, perforated end caps, and manifolds per the engineer's plans. Acceptable foundation stone is clean, crushed, angular ash toe M43 number 3 or 4. Once you are on the job site, excavate the bed and prepare the subgrade. Allow for 12 inches of perimeter stone parallel to the chamber rows and 12 inches of perimeter stone from the base of all end caps. Place a non-woven geotextile over the prepared bed and up the walls. Then, place and compact the foundation stone to achieve a flat surface before placing the chambers. A single layer of woven fabric is to be placed on the foundation stone at all inlet rows and the manifold. Use a double layer of woven fabric for the entire length of the isolator row before the chambers are assembled. Non-woven fabric is to be placed on top of the inlet connection and around the entire chamber system, including the manifolds. All non-woven fabric must overlap 24 inches at the seams. The manifold pipe must be inserted a minimum of 12 inches into the end caps, 
while the header manifold must be a minimum of 12 inches away from the end cap. Be sure there is a tight fit between the pipe and the end cap so that there are no gaps for embedment stone to pass. In preparation for placing the chambers, a minimum 9 inches spacing must exist between chamber rows. Non-degradable spacers, such as brick, can be used for layout convenience. It is recommended that the end caps be left off of either end of the rows until the correct placement of stone can be visually verified. Absolutely essential to a successful installation is to backfill the embedment stone evenly across the width of the bed, including the perimeter, to achieve proper support of the outside rows and end caps. Perimeter stone must extend horizontally to the excavation wall for straight or sloped sidewalls. Where OSHA required sloped or stepped excavation walls result in large volumes of embedment stone, the contractor may elect to reconstruct vertical excavation walls, limited by OSHA requirements, by placing and compacting soils outside the separation fabric. This is outside the scope of StormTech guidance, and approval by the consulting engineer or geotech may be required. In all cases, the chambers must be fully supported by embedment stone extending all the way to the excavation wall to a depth of at least 12 inches over the top of the chambers before any loads are placed on the bed. Construction vehicle loading must be in accordance with tables found in the MC3500, MC4500 StormTech Construction Guide. Rollers and dozers must work in parallel to chamber rows. Minimum cover depth from the top of the chamber must not be less than 24 inches to the base of the flexible pavement. Maximum cover depth from the top of the chamber must not be greater than 7 feet for the MC4500 and 8 feet for the MC3500. Following these steps and referring to the StormTech Construction Guide and other StormTech resources can result in the proper installation of a StormTech chamber system. For more information on StormTech products, visit www.stormtech.com or call 888-892-2694 to speak with a representative.